Well, no, definitely not. I was in something once, but I would not, um, I wouldn't put that on my list, but Listen, my manager have, probably would be like, you have I've acted IMDb, once. So you yeah, did okay. it. One time. Honestly, if you've ever been in anything that can be listed on IMDb, like you're Oscar ready, you know? That's so nice. I appreciate it's your that. Dream. <laughs> Um, I do feel like you do a million things, though. Did I leave anything out? Um, I have a YouTube channel, but I haven't done anything with it in a year, so I'm sure people would like me to, but it's almost like, I think it's almost been a year anniversary since my last video. Like, wow. quarantine, like, I'm like, what? I don't have anything. I just, this pandemic is such a situation for me, personally. Interesting. I... I feel like this pandemic has made me feel more like talking about the banal is acceptable. But I love that for you. Was that sort of like a conscious choice to take a break from it? No, it's like the complete opposite. I, I made a video a year ago being like, I'm going to make a lot more videos. And then it was the last video I made. But I made a lot of other videos like that weren't for me. And that's kind of what happened. Nice. Um, and that brought me like a lot of joy and it was like, I was feeling more inspired to do that than I was to like sit around and be like, this is what I'm doing in a pandemic. Like I just, I couldn't, I, I felt like it was like, I needed an escape from that situation. And I felt I like that. most YouTube channels and everything was like, this is what you could do, or you could do this. Or like, this is what I'm cooking. And I'm like, I appreciated watching it, but I was just like, I don't want to add to that noise. Like it's not making me feel, I didn't feel inspired to do that. But I did I feel that. inspired to like create like an escapism from it and make other videos. So that was fun. You're a talented director and conceptor and that's mm -hmm. exciting. And I, I get the wanting to like take the spotlight off of your own experience a little bit. Not only did 2020 like teach us that it's really important to like give the mic to other people. You know what I mean? Black Lives Matter. <laughs> um, but also I feel like just as an artist or anybody who's like work is built on output all the time. Like even this interview series has like really lit me up because I'm like other people have stuff to say too and it's exciting to shine a light on them yes yeah Definitely. should we get into the cues ask me whatever you want oh shit I'm gonna get crazy <laughs> JK <laughs> it's the same questions every week <laughs> okay awesome okay who is your favorite historical female figure oh my gosh what a big question um who is I mean, I want to say my grandma, but um, I don't think that that necessarily counts. <laughs> oh, I'd like that, though. I appreciate that. Um, is your grandma still with us? No, she's not. Okay, she's, so she made history. She is history now. Well, uh, yeah. You can't Google her. What What about your grandma? Um, She just was, like, the most empathetic, like, nicest human being, like, made everyone feel special, and I just aspire to be like her so she's just such a cool lady like and just lived in like this small town like nothing was really happening and like when she passed away they like built a bench about her and like it's just I mean it's just by the baseball field like it's not like she's from Pennsylvania like this little steel town and like whatever but I'm just like she made a mark in her little space and I'm like aspired to be like her in That's amazing my own you've, ways but you've definitely already earned yourself like a whole church pew you know what I mean like by, by I don't you. know a hockey rink I don't know <laughs> thank, <right>. thank you <laughs> thank you I yeah. think that was a demotion actually I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> no but I'll take it I'll take any any sitting area when I pass away please please construct that for me okay cool I actually like sitting areas are really emotional my dad taught me when I was little that when you pass a bench that's dedicated to someone you have to sit on it for 20 seconds to honor them so, that's really sweet yeah I love if i that. ever pass your grandma's bench I will please sit, on, sit it. on it thank you <laughs> um but i also kind of want to hold you to this question and make you think of a famous person that's died oh, okay 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 can okay. you recall anyone i also go blank with facts so it's okay if you really i know that. i really do i really do um maybe like this maybe this is controversial but like marilyn monroe i just think that iconic just iconic and yeah, i love that she like really yeah. I love that she, like, owned her sexuality in a time when, like, and not, like, queer sexuality, but, like, just being, like, a sexual human being in a time when, like, women weren't really, like, allowed to. Absolutely. Um, I think that's dope. And I feel like that's what so many people are trying to do now in, like, different ways. But, yeah, she was definitely, like, a trailblazer for... Yes. 
she was definitely ahead of her time. People think of her as this icon of like femininity. Like some of her most celebrated quotes are like, I'm in it. It's a man's world. I'm just living in it. But that's yeah. like fucking entrepreneurial. She was like, I see what the world is and I want to be a success. And she created an image, like a branded image with the way she did her makeup and her hair. And yeah, she was incredibly sexual for the time. And also yeah. has like a lot of queer leaning, like kitschy pinup y photo shoots of her like working out and stuff. Love that. We love her. The one thing about her that gets me though is that like people are like, she's so fucking curvy, curviest woman in the world. She's like, like a Not. size six still. <laughs> yeah, literally. We're so here for, real. We're here for sizes. Yeah. Um, what is one challenge you've had to overcome in your industry? Huh. Um, that's an interesting question because it depends on what industry we're talking about, and I'm not really sure where I am. Um, I feel like maybe like there's maybe like um like an idea of like a YouTuber and like what a YouTuber is, and I think maybe like you can feel like branded by that in a way that's like you feel less legitimate in some way but that's also changed a lot it's like interesting because when i moved to la i moved here because i was like really doing youtube and it was successful and whatever and i remember being like an uber rides and i'd be like oh I'm, I'm a youtuber and i remember like all the drivers would always be like you can like live off of that and i would be like i, I guess i don't know yeah and now i get an uber I mean, now I would never say that because I learned don't really say what you do. Yeah. I'm always, I'm like, I'm a student. Like, I'm like, like I'm just like, um, really busy. And I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm busy. usually, I'm like, I, don't, I can't get into this. But, you know, years pass and I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm like a YouTuber. And then it totally flipped and they'd be like, oh, my God, can I give you my card? So, like, it, it, YouTube has had, like, such a trajectory of, like, a different situation of, like, people not understanding it and then people being like, oh, you can definitely make money off of YouTube. And I also want to make money off of your YouTube. And like, we you put this on your Twitter, you know, it's like, oh God, am I here? Yeah, I can still hear you. Did I leave? Did, did you lose me? You left. For okay. A I got like a weird notification. Moment. It was fleeting. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, I feel like if, if I've had any issue, it would be like with that and how YouTube has changed and like how people view you as someone who is a creator on, on that platform. Yeah, I mean, that's so cool. You're a troubadour in your own industry and world, like Marilyn Monroe. I mean, you know what I'm saying. But, like, <laughs> the the internet is crazy, and anybody who took advantage of it or naturally was gravitated toward it early, yeah, the whole world is so envious of that at this point. They're like, oh, my God, that's real. Same thing with TikTok, yeah. et cetera. So I so think true. that's super cool that you just, like, had a new way to change the world. Um what name a woman who has had a big influence on you oh god i mean there's so so many i feel like i'm like surrounded by women especially in la like and i moved moved here what is happening my phone keeps like going black like, can you hear oh, me no. i'm nervous okay I'm You're like a little it. frozen. Don't be um, like to everyone watching. This is the internet. It's fragile. Like just be patient with us. Yeah, it's so weird. Um. Anyway, I feel like since I moved to LA from, I went to school in Oklahoma and like I'm from Dallas, Texas. And when I came out here, like I just immediately surrounded myself with like a lot of queer women, and I've continued to do that. And I feel like it would be a disservice to all the women in my life to just say one woman has had the biggest impact on me because it's just like it's everyone there's so many and um yeah I don't know obviously also my mom because I'm sure she would be offended if I didn't say her but uh yeah just like all the queer women that I've met in Los Angeles and like the way that they've taught me how to like love myself I feel like I I talked a big game before I got here that I was like oh I'm so fine with who I am and like I'm so comfortable in my skin but like at the end of the day I was still really like struggling with like being confident and then once I got here and I was around so many other people like me it like really changed my life and I just was like oh actually true and now what I'm saying I actually believe it you know yeah that's beautiful I feel like that saying the queer female community totally counts because they are sort of like one gigantic being that just like yeah. knowing that that community exists can make you feel so much safer in the world and like seeing yourself in other people I feel that way too 
Um, I'm so glad that LA was so kind to you too. I think there's such a stigma about LA me being, I just moved there in the pandemic and you know, like for the last 10 years of me living in New York, everyone was like, LA is so fake. Fuck LA. Like, sorry, I'm cursing. It's my fake. <laughs> yeah, you can do um, whatever you want. But like, don't go there. Everybody's so superficial and like New York is real and be real. Like New York is where I grew up. Like that's my home for sure. I would never hate on New York, but LA is totally about who you know and that sounds spooky because you have to be able to meet people but also there are lots of good people there and it can be a really homey cozy like environment to meet very real people who champion you i found definitely um best advice you've ever received or advice you'd give to your younger self or your life's motto i lumped all these together because i feel like they kind of beget the same answer or whatever you can answer it however you want life's motto advice to your younger self or best advice Okay. Well, my whole YouTube channel is really dedicated to my younger self. So if you ever wanted to know what I wanted to say to myself, you could just watch that because definitely <laughs> the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Just watch all of that. But yeah, that was definitely all of, all of my YouTube stuff has always been like, because I didn't have that voice. And so I created it basically for myself, but obviously it resonated with other people, which is really nice. Um, but like, uh, like quote, my dad always told me to be intolerant to intolerance. Mm. So I feel like now more than ever, that's really um, important as well. So yeah, just to be intolerant to intolerance. That would be my quote. It's so lucky to have good advice from your parents. Like that's a really good one. Go dad. Yeah, I know. He's we great. also stand good dads on this page. We did. My dad's, my dad's advice to me was cross that bridge when you come to it, which is also really good. I feel like I like stress so much in my life. I try to control everything ahead of time. And yeah. that's just like so simple. And I can always see him saying it. Like, it's so nice to have good older people in your life who have advice for you. <laughs> so true. Um, okay, this one's like really serious. I don't know if you're ready to go here, but um, salty or sweet? I was like, this is either going to be very serious or she, they're, they're joking with me right now. I'm like, yeah, you did okay. a great job. Don't worry. You crushed yourself immediately. <laughs> Thank you. That is an example right. of a kind thing to do. We love it. It's okay to make mistakes. Working. Okay. Um, I'm salty. Always. You are salty. I love this question because sometimes people answer it in a personality way and sometimes people choose what they want to eat. So which way did you just answer that? <laughs> Definitely food. I'm like, I'm, yeah, I'm more okay. of a salty food person. I would say I'm a sweet personality person salty I think food. that's like definitely what you give off but I thought you okay. were just like revealing a first look at the fact that you're actually <laughs> really nasty imagine no no I'm I think I'm sweet I definitely can be salty as a personality as well but I mean more that's sweet. necessary right yeah yeah um, okay so I'm also salty it's a trick question it's a trap all of my fans know that I love salty so now that I know we're on the same page what is amongst your favorite salty snacks Mm. Um, I definitely I'm a sucker for just like a potato chip, specifically like a hot Cheeto is definitely yes. a, a vibe for me. Um my favorite food is like penne all vodka. So Okay. It's pretty salty, but it's not really a snack, it's more of a meal. That's fine. So yeah. It's also yeah. a snack to me. I just eat throughout okay. the day. So <laughs> Okay, good. That was a great answer. I feel rejuvenated by that answer. And we're about halfway through the interview. So that was great. Thank you. Perfect. Hot Cheetos. Shout out. Sponsor both of us. <laughs> what makes you feel empowered, strong, and confident? Oh, man. <sighs> That's such a great question. Congrats on your song, Confident, by the way. And the Thank video. you. You know this is a plug. <laughs> congrats it, it all looks amazing um, thank you our mutual friend Tatia who like works with Shannon a lot directed that video and it turned out so 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 great it was a win for all of us you are a wonderful dancer I cannot in a million years do any of that but thank um, you it was really like empowering for me to put that into something because I have never like found a way for that side of my dance life to come into my music and I was like mm -hmm. I gotta write more songs I can be slutty to this feels so good <laughs> oh my god so real okay, um, back I, to you. yeah okay well I will say dancing does not make me feel confident cool. because I am very bad at it um I feel like I feel most confident when I like put something out and it's received by a lot of people like like I don't know. I don't even know how to explain this. It's going to sound really stupid. Like 
not necessarily like, oh, when I tweet something and a bunch of people are like, yeah, I feel the same way. But like, sort of like everything I've done with social media, like when I put out a message and it's received by a lot of people in a way that they're like, oh my God, I feel seen is when I feel the most confident. Cause I'm like, oh my God, I like was anxious to say that or put that out there. And now I know that I'm not alone. And now I feel more confident in whatever it is. Like, and it's a lot of different things. It's like, whether it's talking about mental health or it's talking about like my sexuality, whatever, that's when I feel the most, I guess when you like see yourself in a mirror of other people is when I, I feel the most confident. Which takes sharing, which is so scary, but like, it's cool that you, your life has brought you to a place where sharing has often enough begat being seen or feeling connected to people. That's cool. Definitely. Definitely. A unique experience. I don't know about you. I feel like this probably happens to you a lot, but I get a lot of messages from people being like, how do I come out or how do I tell my truth to my family or how do I be like more confident in who I am? And it's like, it's really just, you have to take the risk of putting it out there. Yeah. For like the longest time, I think my Instagram bio said like, people will surprise you. And I don't remember why I took it out, but I did at some point, but because where I grew up and like going to school in Oklahoma, like I was definitely surrounded by a lot of conservative people. And I always say like, you know, it, I waited a long time to come out, like basically all the way to my senior year. And I, I didn't give people the chance to be there for me. Like mm -hmm. I, I convinced myself that they wouldn't. And so I just didn't ever say anything. And then finally I did. And I'm like, people will surprise you. Like you, you have the ability, like if you don't give someone the chance, you'll never know. That's so good. It's yeah. also funny that you say you waited a long time because I didn't even sort of know I was gay until I met someone I loved my first year of college. So now this makes me wonder how long did you hold on to knowing? I'm envious that you knew so young. Um, yeah, I had like an experience in high school where I kind of fell in love with my best friend. Right. And um, the feeling was mutual, I'm pretty sure at the time. But hey, uh, shout out. <laughs> Whoever that yeah. person is from the past, the one that got away. Oh yeah. Except for then her parents put like a baby monitor in her room and like, and like outed me to my parents. And then my parents were like, Oh, are you gay? And I was like, no, I'm not definitely not gay. And then I went to school in Oklahoma. I joined a sorority and I was like, going to meet my Prince Charming. And then I was like, Oh my God, I'm a fucking idiot. I'm surrounded by like hundreds of hot girls. Hotties. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, well, I have well, a really similar story. Actually. <laughs> I was like, I, I wouldn't say I was in love, but I was definitely attracted to a best friend in high school and we would hang out at my house and like do naughty things I didn't even cross my mind that I was gay I was just like who cares trying stuff and my parents even uh, like my my church I also come from a pretty small town my church sent an anonymous letter to my dad with photos of us on MySpace that were literally just like the scene kid thing at the time that were like we're in a photo together love you bestie and um <laughs> my dad called me down from hanging out with that friend and said, are you gay? Cause if you're gay, it's okay. Oh my gosh. That's and nice. I was like, dad, you're like, no, absolutely not. <laughs> and I truly believed it until I like fell in love and love when I went to college. That's so funny. But yeah, it's good to know. It's good to know that people are, they will surprise you because people love you. People in your life love you and they'll get with your reality. If you just share it with them, you know, and if they yeah. really don't, then like, kind of fuck them yeah I mean the queer community is a family in and of itself so yes absolutely okay that was a really great answer um <laughs> what is your most prized possession oh my gosh this is so funny because I was looking at your Instagram to see like kind of like what your other interviews had been like and I think you have like a I, I don't know like a I don't even understand Instagram anymore. It's so fucking weird to me. But you had a highlight of someone talking about a ring. Yeah. Or whatever. It was, or I don't know. A highlight. Oh, my God. I sound so old. Let's Yeah, move whatever on. it is. Anyway. There was a clip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my gosh. If they ask me this question, this is so awkward because this is, like, my answer as well. But a little different. I, I always wore a ring of my grandma's on my ring finger. I have, like, a tattoo on it, like, an awful oh, yeah. stick and poke tattoo. But – memories but I used to it used to be hidden all the time because the ring was like perfectly big enough to cover it last year I lost the ring in the ocean and it was a very traumatic experience and I hired like two different metal detector guys to come out and try <laughs> to find it I was like desperately trying to find this ring and I cried and whatever um 
but I think it was like the only it was like my only thing that I had any like worth or like importance to right and I feel like for me it was really sad obviously cried a lot but like I think it was just like a sign that like nothing there's like nothing in the world that means more than like the actual person or people in your life like I just can't I can't afford to give anything that much weight ever again and I just don't I don't intend to so I feel like yeah my most prized possessions are human beings and not anything like I could lose everything that I have and I'll be fine that's so beautiful wow so if nine lives teaches anybody anything it's just like don't give a fuck about your jewelry <laughs> you will lose it <laughs> yeah that's the no, lesson that from is, this series that is such an important thing though to to like I don't know I feel like I'm almost too good at this like letting stuff go when I fuck it up or like like just knowing that you can't be too attached to anything even just like songs or things that I like have put my heart into like somehow the hard drive yeah. disappears or something like yeah. really you can't imbue too much significance into any physical thing it's so real totally I love that you have a shitty tattoo about it, though. You can tattoo <laughs> your body for life. <laughs> yes, yes. I'll never lose that unless I... Do you have a lot of tattoos? Um, no, I only have three, like, very small tattoos. And <laughs> two of them are about my grandma. So, like, I am too obsessed with my grandma. Like, I have to chill a little bit about it. I was trying to think of, a, like, another tattoo the other day, and I was like, there's a problem because everything is, like, coming back to my grandma, and this is just too weird now. Like, I my obsession... Um, no, I but love yeah. it. She's your own. Like some people spend their lives being obsessed with Catherine Hepburn, me, or, <laughs> yeah. or somebody who has died who was an icon to them. That's so cool that it's somebody in your family who, like, you definitely carry ancestral like trauma and magic from whatever. That's really cool that you feel so connected to her. Yeah, it's funny though. Yeah, so I have I have three tattoos. I have this one. I have my grandma's name on my wrist because it's June. And when I got it, my stepsister literally texted me. She's like, oh, my gosh, it's so cool. For, did you get it for Pride Month? And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. That's so I'm, funny. I'm so gay that that's what she did. And then um, I just got a tattoo for, like, my family because there's four of us, me, my mom, my dad, and my sister. And then we've had a lot of – I've had a lot of step-siblings and a lot of step-situations because my parents have been remarried a couple times. And – I love all of them, but I just got this four because I'm like, at the end of the day, like I have this like core group of people and like my mom and my dad both had cancer in 2019 and, but like they're, they're both fine and everything's fine. But like my mom, like picked my dad up after he had his like surgery on his ear and like he stayed with my mom and like they're divorced. They've been divorced since I was 10, but like we're all there for each other still. So it was just That's to like really cool. signify that. Yeah. My parents have also both had cancer and are also oh, really they still work together as parents yeah that's, that's so cool, cool. we yeah. have too many similarities we should we should talk not on instagram live yeah sometimes. we should have a real chat <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool i love structured questions and structured games though because this would never come up you know yeah i agree I, completely a lot of my friends absolutely abhor games but i think that you always end up somewhere you didn't think you were going oh my god i'm a gamer through and through you're a gamer? Like what? I no, don't not like actual games. No, you just like not games. like. Yeah, my mom's like obsessed with like board games and stuff. So I've grown up like sitting around a table playing games. I love them. So is that like your ideal celebration, like a board game and wine night type of thing? Yes, I would say that usually. But now because of the pandemic, I would really love to go to like a bar and dance off with you know like usually yes. i'd be like oh i love the board game night but like I'm, i've done it a lot now so you i would like craving an actual night out i would love well, to leave my house if you feel like risking your life i'm in miami and <laughs> people are dancing i don't um, feel like risking my life but don't don't do it it's not great don't do it but i am in a show that's safely distanced and you can come see it if you feel like risking your life in the streets of miami there um, you go what is one thing everyone could do to make the world a better place? Mm, have more empathy, just like in general. I feel like we are so divided right now in so many ways, especially just with, I mean, obviously politics and like 
just, I just don't, I feel like there's never gonna, we're never gonna get to a place again where we can see and understand each other unless people can be more empathetic and like have conversations where you're like actually earnestly trying to teach someone something or like share your experience because right now it's just so much of like, this is what's right, this is what's right. We're never gonna agree with each other. And like, obviously at the end of the day, there's a lot of things I truly believe are wrong and I don't agree with people's opinions, but just yelling into the void and like yelling at those people and being like, you're wrong, I'm right. You're never gonna get anywhere with that. So I think just being more empathetic and if both sides could be more empathetic, hopefully we could come to some kind of like understanding of like how the world could be a better place for both of us. Yeah. You know? I I totally feel that, especially being like involved in social media, there uh, there is actually like algorithms at work to show you what you want to see and to also make you excited when you see division break out. You know, cancel culture is like super unhelpful. Like, even though I'm incredibly like, I don't know, I'm dedicated to work against sexual violence and inclusion of LGBT people. I do feel like we're not having enough conversations with the people who are getting it wrong. We're not teaching anybody how to talk about consent. We're just talking to ourselves with people who agree that the other guys are bad. And I feel like that empathy also like requires going outside of your bubble and trying to find a way to actually learn something or have an actual uncomfortable conversation. And it's hard because so much of it is like on a platform where people are watching. So people get defensive before they're willing to make mistakes. Totally. I mean, we've all been trapped inside of our own homes where we're literally talking to people who do agree with us also. Like, we're not going anywhere to face these things head on. It's all through social media or like mostly or the news. <clears throat> and like, I think that that's created this like, an even more intense, like belief in your own ideas. It's crazy. Not forget about politics, even like, just not talking to different people about like, any life experience we're just talking to each other and like getting the same thing like revert like back back to us with our people you know like our how many people are in your bubble of people that you're really seeing and talking to not many so you're just not getting like challenged the way that we normally would be for a whole year of your life so we're all like oh now we're even we feel even more right about the things that we're right about you yeah know? it's crazy yeah. Gotta find ways to go outside of your bubble. <laughs> yeah. It's like Google like a movie that like has somebody who doesn't look like you in the lead or like try and, you know, I don't know, representation matters too. And like, if, I talked about this in one of the other interviews, but like Netflix shows me only people like me. Like you have yeah. to actually look for you have new to go information. To search for it. Yeah. Okay, this is the last question. Um, it's, it's hard. I feel like this question is hard. What okay. is the best thing about being you? Oh. Rough, right? Yeah, it's so rough. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Truly so. Let, uh, let me think about that. I'm like, every other question, I'm like, this, immediately. This one, I'm like, mm. um, Well, maybe if it helps, like, this is a safe moment to like just be conceited about it there's got to be something that you love about being you <laughs> there, there's gotta be right it's gotta be <laughs> um i don't know i guess i don't know what is the best thing i mean maybe i'd say i mean there's i'm sure there's better things to say but because we're just live i think the best thing is that I have a platform to speak to people and talk about things that I, I want the world to be talking about. And like, that is such a privilege. I feel like, um, I feel like it's a privilege that's changed a lot because the platforms are like, there's more people with them than there's ever been. Like when I first started doing social media stuff, cause it was so long ago, I, I remember it being such a crazy thing that I had like 10,000 followers, like in, 2014 or whatever and I was like yeah this is wild but like it is crazy that I've spent so much time now being able to be like this is what I think and there is a platform of people that are like oh you know that's that's wild and it was like it was I think when like Black Lives Matter stuff started happening too I was just like this is crazy that I can speak about this that mm -hmm. I can talk about it at all is I am so privileged that like 
I have an audience to, to talk to about mm -hmm. this. And yeah, I think that's definitely probably like the best thing about being me right now, I feel is that I can, I can say something and someone's going to listen. That's so nice. But yeah. Yeah, that's really, really valuable and definitely cool that you recognize that as a privilege and are doing what you can to make it authentic and important and helpful to the state of the world. Um, but I'm not going to let you get out of the second part of this question, which is also like, I like to make people do this because there's just got to be a physical attribute about your body that you carry around just because like we're in such practice of hating on ourselves. Please celebrate one thing about your physical human. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I think I have pretty hands. I love that. Oh my God. I love talking about hands. <laughs> What's okay. going on? You don't, I don't, you don't have to show them, but you could. I just, they're okay. I, although I have like a stain on my hand right now, so let's just look at this one. But they're just. From what? From they're... crafting? No, I actually have a self tanner that I like use on my face sometimes that spilled when I moved. And yesterday was all over my bathroom counter and I cleaned it up and obviously it didn't do a good job of cleaning. Amazing. Because it stained me. That's amazing. What? I would feel so frightened to use self tanner on my face. I would definitely look splotchy as hell. So congrats no. on that. You need to use this product. It's so easy. It's it's called Tan Lux. It's just like drops that you put in your own moisturizer, and you put like I put like one little drop of it, and you just say, it just makes you look. I I feel like I'm like deathly pale because of COVID. I'm like I need to be outside. Although I just moved into a new house, and I have an outdoor space now, and so I'm very excited. Congrats, like, you're going to be sunbathing in the morning. Yes, I'm coming to you live from my brand new house. So Love that. Congrats on Exciting. having a house as an adult. That's amazing. Um, I mean, I rent it, so don't, well, yeah, don't you buy this. You're like in your own <laughs> space. That's cool. Yeah, that um, is nice. I really, really appreciate the hands thing. I actually, in the show that I'm in, I, this is actually maybe I shouldn't say this. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, hands are great. We love hands. And, um, thank you so much for being on the show. That's the last question. Oh I guess God. one thing I can say about hands is like, I also love my hands. They're like square and like, they're just really straight up, you know, like I have the thumb of a seven year old boy. Oh, I love that. That's I feel so like, nice. like my hands give me gender euphoria, you know? Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. that's a good flex. Thanks for doing this. It was really of fun course. to hang out with you for a sec and let's like expand on it in real life. I would love that. Thank you for asking me to be a part of this. It's awesome. You did a great job. You're so cool. I'm <laughs> going to go binge your whole YouTube channel and you guys should. Oh do that. my God. Yeah, <laughs> maybe don't, but. You can yeah. send me like a playlist of your favorites that you want okay. to see. Okay, perfect. Anyway, I, I hope you have a great day. The daylight savings is fucking with me aggressively and like feels very much so like 930 to me. I have no idea what time it is. I'm in Miami and it says it's <laughs> oh. at 135, but I still feel like it's 9 a.m. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So you well, have a lot of day left, basically. I have so much day left. I'm very excited. Oh, my God. Thanks for hanging out with me for your morning. Of course. Have a great day. Okay. Everybody say <laughs> bye to Shannon. Bye, everybody. Uh, are you? Oh, okay. Well, say the goodbye.